Now, overview of mi milestone four. As you see, milestone four is 0 0.9, which means people are proofreading it, make sure there are no boo-boos in there, okay? But the, the idea is right, you can actually start doing it. Don't think that, oh my God, it's 0 0.9, I should wait. No, that's not that you can start doing it. If there are minor changes or little things here or there, we're gonna let you know. <coughs> so milestone four. The very first thing that you need to do because your class, you are creating two classes out of vehicle, that is car and motorcycle, those classes need to know if the class is empty, need to be able to set the class to empty, need to get the license plate, need to get the make and model, and set make and model. That's why those things are a request that you make those things uh, in milestone three, you change it to protect it, okay? Your milestone three for its own test being passed doesn't need to be protected because it's by, it's by its own, but this one you do. So, so you make it protected <clears throat> and then you start developing the car and the motorcycle. Just to make sure that I am giving you correct advice, I'm just gonna bring up the code over here but in front of myself so I can actually see what is being done. So work uh, four. So, so we get two, two kinds of vehicles that can be parked in this uh, parking. One is car, one is motorcycle. A car has an option to be car washed while parked. So you can actually ask them to wash your car while it's being parked over there. Uh, the motorcycle doesn't have that option. But motorcycle has the option, you need to know if there's a sidecar over there or not. You know, some motorcycles have sidecars. So that has to be uh, uh, put over there. So these are the things that, uh, um, um, a car and motorcycle need to know. Uh, other than that, uh, they don't add any properties to the, to the vehicle. Other than that, the properties of vehicle stand, okay? Uh, so car wash flag attribute, is that's, that's the one that I was talking about, okay? So uh, you can create it with a no argument constructor, sets the car, and therefore the base class to a safe embedded state. Also, you can, uh, uh, like its base class, you can uh, use it using the license plate and the make and model. Um, so uh, constructors are created that way. It's your choice if you are making two constructors and you want to create one constructor with default values, whatever you are doing, it doesn't matter. As long as it satisfies that need, we are fine. As long as a no, no, no argument constructed that sets to safe theme state and a two argument constructed building it like that exists, we are just fine. <clears throat> if one of the vehicle price or make and model are pointing to null or if they are invalid values, the whole thing is set to uh, an invalid empty state. Apply the rule of three, the arrive classes with resources, so you do it the same thing over here. So we had a pure virtual function called write type, okay? Now write type for car is implemented and it prints C comma, that's it, okay? That's all it does, okay? So when it's called, it receives, an, we mentioned how all the writes are done. So it receives an I stream and re returns, so all those things are done, but it prints a C comma. That's what write type is. And for motorcycle, it's M comma. So why it does that? So when you are saving this as a comma separated value, that write type will be called first, which adds a tag at the beginning of the record. So when you are reading a record, it tells you what record is gonna be read, you are about to read. So when you are just printing on a screen, type is not printed. Right type is not called when you're printing, because you have, it's, it's saying it's a motorcycle, the person can see it. It says it's a car, the person can see it. But when you're actually printing it in a file, right type is called before anything. And it prints the type, and then it prints the, all the specification and everything that has to get printed. So later in Milestone 5, when you're reading the file and you want to build your parking from the data on the hard drive, you read one character and skip one comma. If that one character is C, you instantiate a car in a vehicle. If that character is M, you instantiate a motorcycle 
in the vehicle. Therefore, you can have an array of vehicle with either car or motorcycle in it. And therefore, you can load your parking. That's what is it for. <coughs> okay? Uh, overrides the read method of the class. So this, are we talking about car now? Is this a car? Yeah, it's a car. Okay, so let me bring the reads, read for the car. So the read for the car, uh, uh, you gotta, when you are reading, you need to know what you are reading. Are you reading from the screen from user or you are reading from the file? Or you are reading as a comma separated? So are you, is it interactive or it's not? Let's put it that way. If it's comma separated, it's not interactive. A string of comma separated values come in, you have to read them. If it is not comma separated value, then you have to do interaction. You have to tell to the person to enter this and that. So <clears throat> what you do if it's a comma separated value, if it's not comma separated value, you've got to say car information entry. If not, you just read. So if, it's, if it is set to comma separated value, it will read as follows. Again, this explains how to do it. It doesn't mean that you have to follow exactly those steps. <clears throat> Usually, this is how you write a function. You write the function when you see it. Then you take a step back and look at your code and see, am I doing redundant stuff in here? Am I, uh, like, do I have an if statement? and an else statement that the first values are identical. If that's the case, they come out of the if statement. Do I have an if else statement where the final values are the same? If it's the case, that comes out. So you first write it, then you optimize it, OK? So if it is set to a comma separated value, it calls the read of the base class. So the read of your class doesn't know that there is a tag at the beginning. It starts from after that c comma or m comma okay it assumes that data begins with the data of the thing not the type that type is parking's responsibility to read not the object's responsibility okay so it calls to read first it calls the read of the base class and then after that it reads the boolean and it's done okay because in the read of vehicle you've done all the stuff that the vehicle has commonly with the other one okay so that's what you do and if it is set to comma uh, separated, if, if it's not set to comma separated values, then you do go with interaction. You uh, first say car information entry and go to new line, and then you call the read, and then you do a foolproof read to get a true false from user for car wash for car, or for motorcycle, it's going to be, does it have a sidecar or not, okay? And that makes the two reads different. Hence, two different functions, hence virtual functions. <clears throat> so the right of the car. So when I'm mentioning this, the reason that you have, you are writing two classes and you have such a short time to do so because they really don't have anything in them. In, in vehicle, you have already done everything. And car is exactly like a motorcycle. It's just the internal of the functions are different. You write one, it works. You can write the other one exactly using the same logic. <clears throat> so what you do, if, uh, if the car is invalid, you just print invalid car object. You don't care in what state you are. OK? <clears throat> if it's not in an invalid state, first you call the base, then if the class is in comma separate mode, you're going to print the car wash flag, one or zero, okay? If not, you're going to actually write with car wash or without car wash. If it's not comma separate, it's a form, you're showing it to a human being. They don't understand ones or zeros. You're going to mention what does it mean when it's one and what does it mean when it's zero. What do you do when it's true and what do you do when it's false. So with car wash or without car wash, you're going to mention that. <coughs> For the motorcycle module, is exactly the same thing, but the car, the car wash flag over here is uh, a sidecar flag. Rule of three, read, write, everything identical to the other one. <clears throat> but the difference is that for the write, you don't print with, car, with sidecar or without sidecar. 
you simply add with sidecar only if the flag is one. If the flag is zero, you don't print anything. You simply put a with sidecar at the end. And that ends your micro, uh, your uh, file store four. Okay? Um, pretty straightforward. Um, <clears throat> I suspect if you start doing it and follow the instructions, having that you finished uh, milestone three, it's going to take you approximately two hours to finish this. Two hours <clears throat> of uh, a person who's going to get B and pass the course. If you're a D student, it's going to be six hours. If you're an A-plus student, it's going to be one hour. Okay? You know what I mean. When I say a D student, it means... When I say by D student, I don't mean that you're weak. I mean that you have to go for every topic and see what it is and then do it. Okay? If that's the case, it's going to take more. Why everybody's laughing at that thing? <laughs> anyway, so, so yeah. Um, and again, I'm available. And uh, the funny thing is that the only, that most, 80% of people are actually ask for help are those who already done it and submitted it and want to know if they could do it better or not. So, and 20% are actually with problems. So, I don't know what's going on. Um, it's a kind of strange this semester. So, please, uh, contact me. Uh, and that's milestone four. Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? All right.